What's up, folks? How's it going? Come to you today in the midst of madness. I normally do... It's most easy for me to make videos when I'm irritated by something. And at this moment, I find myself more concerned than anything else. Um, I do believe we are living in the most... Uh, dangerous moment certainly in my lifetime in at least 30 something years probably more <clears throat> I've been forced to the conclusion that the world um, is being run by children uh, I fear there are no adults in the room any longer and uh, I believe that we're in grave danger um, the, the United Nations tell me are we living is are are we gonna live in a game? Are we gonna live uh, in a movie? Are we living on a television show? Um, the United Nations members walk out <laughs> of the assembly upon hearing uh, from the Russians and. Uh, to me, this seems to kind of defeat the entire fucking purpose of the United Nations. The purpose of the United Nations is not to be like, everybody has to be nice to be in it. You, 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 you would, you, it's a place that exists so that diplomacy can occur, even with the worst types, in the worst types of situations, in order to attempt to prevent what it seems that we are careening towards right now as the collective leadership in the West seems to be leaving no room for any kind of reasonable negotiations. Uh, the bombardment of propaganda is beyond anything I've ever seen and it grows by the day. Uh, they seem not at all dissuaded by, you know, I, I talked about the other day the story of Snake Island, which seems the Ukrainian government, now apparently these people were alive. You know, what did I say? We can't believe anything that we're being told about anything. We can't believe anything the Russians are saying. We can't believe anything that the Americans are saying. I am just particularly, you know, it's like, Part of the thing is, you know, it's like, well, you, are you focusing too much on American media? Well, yeah, because I'm familiar with how they lie and how they distort everything in my life. I don't live in Russia or regularly consume Russian media, so it, they have not personally offended me. Uh, ironically, the things that are being said are so insane uh, and all over the place that all really the Russians need to do is not talk. Um, there's a bloodthirstiness which I've never seen before. You know, I really despise like hypocrisy and like these moral... Our whole lives like politically and socially is now based around like moral grandstanding. And none of it even means anything, because nobody even stands by anything that they say. It's not intellectually consistent on any level. Um, we're acting psychotic. Uh, you know, there are politicians suggesting that we enforce a no-fly zone in Ukraine to shoot down Russian aircraft. And they're presenting us with polls where people support war 
in the Ukraine. You know, what we're seeing here is a moral outrage, you know, um, This is not the first time we've seen this. We're seeing a bunch of people pretending uh, to be very, they're very emotionally invested in something that they don't know very much about. Is it unbelievable that people are concerned that other people are dying? No. But I really find it difficult to take seriously the moral grandstanding and histrionics in this country when there are streets in the major cities of this country where I guarantee you more people are going to die in the streets of those cities tonight than are going to die in some of the streets of the cities in Ukraine. You think about how many people um, die of violence in this country you know, a lot of people looking to point out the moral hypocrisies of, <clears throat> you know, rightfully pointed out that the United States and its NATO partners have invaded various sovereign nations, yada, yada. Um, I don't even think it's necessary to venture that far out to explore the moral hypocrisy at hand here. Um, this country is in a state of decline. It's costing people's lives. It's costing people their future and their happiness. And much more can be done about it more easily than can be done about anything that's occurring in the Ukraine, a place where most people didn't even know where it was, okay, before all this started. And what's, it's like, if the option is, we're being, we're being given this, I'm afraid, the reason I'm so concerned is it seems we're being given an option that can only end in one way. Um, we're, there's no evidence so far that, that we're going to do anything to, we're not going to do anything to de-escalate this or accept any kind of demands that the Russians might have um, and they're going to be hard-headed about it and it, it's it's going to lead down a very dark path from which there might be no way to return um, you know people have been criticized for talking you know with about their grim concerns on this and I don't understand that because the other side of the argument is happily you know <clears throat> touting the results of their fantasy war excited by the deaths uh, when it's the right people and all this kind of stuff because it's not like really real to them but it will be when it destroys everyone's life, okay? I don't believe um, that the United States has any concern for promoting or protecting the democracy of anyone. The United States has its concerns, and logically so, for protecting its puppet states. Uh, America is not unique in having puppet states. Most great powers and most medium and even some small powers have had puppet states. It's the way that it is. Um, the United States did not manage this puppet state very well. There are many U.S. puppet states that Russia would never dare invade. I could start naming them, but I don't know what, uh, you know, <laughs> figure it out for yourself. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, we mishandled this. The Ukrainian government, for whatever reason, trusted the United States to protect them. 
it was never going to they were only ever going to be used as a shield and as a battlefield to to act out this uh, play there was no never any intention to do anything that was going to protect the safety of the Ukrainian people because what would be best for the safety of the Ukrainian people would for be for this to end as quickly as possible um, which is certainly not what's being espoused there is calls for a <clears throat> you know there should be a long running resistance that's good that'll be good for the for the children of Ukraine to have a 20 year long guerrilla war backed by American military donations and see their children get killed and uh, everything destroyed. That'll be good for them. Now, if your moral stance is you wish to destroy your mortal energy enemy, Russia, which is now the mortal enemy of all God-fearing men, and you destroy them by any means necessary, then that's fine. But that, in the situation being set up here, that goal is mutually exclusive with the goal of safeguarding the lives of the people of the Ukraine. Um, many more people will die if the even the least bad consequences of the policies being pursued by Western European leaders uh, continue here. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, Putin is a strong man, but his actions have been consistent with his statements. Um, I, I, it doesn't. I believe that he won't back down if our government continues to push this to the point where we start shooting at Russians and shooting down each other's planes and things. And if that continues, it could spiral out of control in such a short period of time um, that it might be impossible to stop something terrible from happening. And the lackadaisical nature with which our government and media has bandied about the concept of war <clears throat> with Russia is psychotic. Um, their murderous warmongering um, is going to lead to many terrible things I'm afraid if it is not stopped now and stopped as quickly as possible um, I <laughs> I wish there were the where are the left-wing people to protest down with the nuclear weapons we're on the precipice of a conflict beyond anybody's ability to uh, comprehend, excuse me, the United States believes, it seems, that it can win, <clears throat> uh, probably, maybe there will be 50 million Americans left and only 5 million Russians whoop de doo good job, good work, you have won. We cannot have a nuclear war. We cannot have a major war with a nuclear-armed country with the capability to deliver ballistic missiles. I do not believe that our inept government and seemingly uh, deteriorating 
military is capable of defending us in a way that would be satisfactory for you and your children. Um, it's psychotic, deranged, and creepy what is going on. And people's willingness to go along with it and not question the artificiality of the consensus for this. I can't possibly believe that the majority of Americans would support war with Russia. And if that is true, then the ability to control the minds of the American people may have reached the point where it's impossible to recover from. It's insanity. It's indefensible. Again, if your goal is the safety and uh, you know the the lives of the people of Ukraine, the policy of pursuing war with Russia is not the way to get that. You see, I propose that the majority of people expressing such an outpouring of concern don't, I can't, they don't have it. Um, this is a signaling of, you know, do people on this, are people intellectually, is it wrong to be doing, yes. But I will tell you that if these people are really as motivated about this as they're acting, then it's quite possible that they're mentally ill. Um, you know, I believe a lot of what's going on, not just the propaganda coming out of the media itself, but many of the commentary, much of the comments on forums and uh, live streams <clears throat> and YouTube channels and such, I believe a lot of them are uh, automated bots. Um, I believe this technology has been expanding rapidly over the last couple of years um, in conjunction with improved AI uh, for chatting. Sometimes it's easy to figure them out if you can engage with them and then it starts to make a little bit less sense but the the shilling is out of control uh, consensus is being manufactured um, for something that will have no benefit for us you know um, I don't know. I just can't. If if the if the people are more concerned about what's going on in Ukraine, such as to just go to have a nuclear war, didn't we just shut down the world for two years and destroy the best economy in this country that we'd had in my lifetime under the auspices of saving people's lives? And we are now careening headlong into a conflict that I, I have no idea where people have gotten this idea that we can just have a war with Russia and, like, we're going to just kick their ass. I don't understand this. You understand that even if we win, that many people will die. It's like in World War II. We kicked their ass. We kicked Japan's ass. We kicked Germany's ass. It still costs like a half million American servicemen lives. This is like this is like a video game or some shit. And like the stuff that's gone around is so ridiculous that people are acting deranged. I just I don't know. I know not very many people will hear this, but I have to put out into the ether 
some something other than a the than this deranged warmongering nonsense you know maybe in some kind of hope that like can like counteract this energy on some fucking level uh so as to stop this uh before it goes too far um And, uh, you know, it's like I did the other day when I did a live stream, I went on and I, I saw here, you know, I wanted to look at all the different, some different news websites, see if they even mention, um, coronavirus. Yesterday, the day before, on CNN, Fox, and BBC, they didn't mention it anywhere. I just found on CNN, they actually do mention it once on their front page, a highly changed coronavirus variant was found in deer after nearly a year in hiding, researchers say. So they haven't totally forgotten about that. Don't forget what they did to your life, what the media and the government has done, and how much they've changed the world over such a short period of time over an event that this this is much more serious potentially the consequences you understand even if you believe the highest number is given for the death from the coronavirus worldwide what they're brewing here is a situation that will cost much more than that and have consequences that are far-reaching and unimaginable. The fallout from the last two years, even if the powers that be were to do everything in their power to start fixing it, and I believe that the powers that be, at least in this country, are actively encouraging the destruction of this society, but even if they took all positive measures, it would still take years to recover from the damage done as a result of the virus and the, the the decisions made surrounding it. This has the potential to create consequences that could last even longer uh, and be more dire. So, I don't know. Not to be too doomer about it, not to be all fucking black-pilled about it, but holy shit, people. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. This just shows America, and this is why, again, this is why, <laughs> this is why I have such grave concerns. This is top CNN. Uh, live updates, Ukraine, Russia, okay, trending. State of the Union takeaways. Then we got Bob Saget's wife, oil prices, Russian oligarchs, Kim Kardashian, and some podcasts. What's, what happened to Bob Saget's wife? Oh, she has grief and gratitude. Okay. Fucking Saget. Who would have thought that Saget and McDonald would be dead and Lang is still alive? <clears throat> Who would have predicted that? Norm McDonald and Bob Saget dead and Artie Lang still alive. Volunteering in Azov in the defense of the Ukrainian... People, Ari Lang. Anyway, I hope you guys uh, stay safe. We'll update some more. Uh, I'll talk to you later.